All right, here's some experimentations in ARM design. Uh, here I have the X drive. It has um, two links um, that that um, that connect these these uh, two arms in an X pattern, and it is almost perfect in in proportional. So whenever I pull on this string, the end here will move out a proportional distance. Almost. It's not quite. The math doesn't work out perfect for it. And the other problem with this design is that. Um, it is not, uh, well, you have to depend on gravity to pull the arm back in. And uh, that could work. I just don't want to be tied to having gravity and to be, to keep my accelerations under uh, 1G. So, enter the, let's see, what are we going to call this? The proportional gear drive joint, or for short, proportional gear drive or really short uh, proportional or er, gear drive <laughs> so I, yeah I think I'm gonna call this gear drive uh, now and um, you can see my uh, this pencil in here is just for tensioning uh, that that is a uh, one problem that's the only problem that I see with this design right now is that I need to put some some kind of tensioning mechanism in here I'm, I think I'm gonna have a string attached to a spring on one side and the other one will be attached to a guitar uh, tuning peg and and so it'll be no big deal for a end user to be able to tension this up. So um, let's just go over the features. Um, there is uh, there is a uh, there's a drive pulley. It, I made it 10 millimeters. I was just pulling numbers out of my hat and uh, there's these the strings go in and then there's these two bolts um, and uh, one string goes back and forth around those two bolts and then another one goes back and forth around those other two bolts and uh, the distance if you sum the distance between these outside bolts and the inside bolts that is always a constant and so what this drive pulley does is just decide how much of the string it's going to go between these two and those two effectively changing the angle and it makes everything proportional I, uh, I pull in an inch and it changes the distance between these 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 the, the end of the arms um, in a very proportional manner and it's a two-sided drive which is a very very exciting so um, let me just run it so you guys can believe me so here I am hit run let me hold this side and right now it's running at 10 millimeters per second, which is not too impressive. Uh, and you can see the string on the two sides. I didn't spend too much time making sure I wrapped this the right way. And so the strings are all crisscrossing each other and rubbing against each other, and it's not a problem. And they just run right over the bolts. There are no bearings on the inside of this. Just uh, five millimeter bolts. And you can see that they're too long because I just, you know, I can't get five millimeter bolts in the U.S. Um, locally. Okay, now it's moving at 33 millimeters per second. So this is normal printing speed for most printers out there. The uh, slicer defaults are at 30 millimeters. Uh, here is 100, which is uh, usually a rapid travel. And if that's not fast enough, 250. And if that's not fast enough, 500. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, as you can tell, I was holding the light end of this and then making it drive the gear and or, or drive the stepper end of it. And um, by my estimations, that is more. It needs more power to drive it, just like I have it, than it will take to drive in normal Simpson orientation, where uh, this um, or where I'm holding it now is tied to the shoulder and and then that top part's uh, attached to the hub. So this should be a very effective drive mechanism. Um, you can see, um, well, things that are the, that are concerning are um, would concern people is, is you know how precise is this? And um, right now I can actually get a little bit of slop in the arm, but most of the slop in the arm is going to be hard to show on the video. But all of it will not uh, will not be in the dimension uh, in in the in the direction of movement. It'll only be side to side, so I, I can't move the arm this way, but side to side, I can jiggle it. But the original Simpson, 
if you remember, it, you know, all of that doesn't matter. Me wiggling here doesn't change the end effector's position. All I really care about is the distance between this point here and this point over there. So if it wiggles, if this thing moves in that, in this direction, like my finger's going back and forth right now, it won't, it will only be a second or third order effect on the uh, position of the end effector. But um, that should all disappear whenever I actually properly tension the string and, uh, you know, I don't have this really colorful pencil being my, uh, my tensioning. And I can actually, I've actually, you know, just pressed down my, my hands on the string to apply, you know, just very, very light pressure and it really takes all the flack out of this. So, I was not expecting this to work, but it does. So you can expect to see it on the new Simpson. Um, I am waiting on, currently I'm waiting on gear uh, tuning pegs and springs. And as soon as I get those next week, I'm going to redesign this, reprint it, uh, make this look a little cooler. I think it looks like a boat. So uh, I want to make it look, um, look pretty aggressive and me. I like this side. It looks really cool already. So I'm going to leave that alone. I might go ahead and print those out, but um, I will need to redesign this as soon as I get the hardware that will go on it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to showing you guys uh, two more of these arms together on a Simpson.